recognized and I guess I would have to call him a minimalist painter or at least maybe maybe a conceptual painter and uh, well we've got a couple of limitations here as I understand it they've got uh, kind of controlled lighting and uh, Robert said that he likes these pieces displayed in natural light so well we'll deal with this this is Untitled and luckily for me it's most of these are all untitled It's from 1958 oil on canvas and I would say that this is probably about uh, five foot square well If you're a fan of contemporary American painting or have paid attention to painting over the last 35 or 40 years, then you know that Robert Ryman is a very important, influential painter. And uh, I believe that this exhibition covers about 45 years of his work. This is titled Classico 6, 1968 acrylic on handmade watermarked paper. Well, <clears throat> I don't want to get too carried away with this. We'll just talk a little bit about Robert. Uh, I think Robert was uh, married to Lucy Lepard, and at one point, maybe during the early 60s, late 50s, I believe that he worked at the Museum of Modern Art. And uh, interestingly enough, a lot of the artists that ended up becoming the minimalists like Don Judd and Saul LeWitt all lived down around the Bowery within probably five or six blocks of each other. This is a major piece. This is titled Council 1982 Oil and Enamel on Linen with Steel Fasteners. Uh, well, in certain ways Robert Ryman is a, the antithesis of Ad Reinhardt. Now Reinhardt was working with black and uh, it's interesting to see how these are attached. So this is kind of uh, floating about four inches off the wall. And uh, well, Reinhardt had a whole philosophical, almost a kind of a, an Asian view of uh, what he was doing. I think uh, Ryman differs in that uh, he's very interested in just the quality of, of paint and he selected white as uh, kind of the, the material but also the concept that he wanted to explore. This has got to be a very early piece here. To Gertrude Mellon, 1958. 
caisson, graphite, and colored pencil on paper. Well, this is nice because I just got through looking at the uh, Jonathan Lasker show and uh, kind of the use of these blocks, these rugged forms is carried on with Jonathan. We'll look at a couple of more. I believe these are a little more recent. Oh no, it's 1962. Well, I think Ryman is kind of chosen to work mostly on square canvases mostly with white paint, but he uses different brands of white paint, different types of white paint. So you've got zinc white, lead white, titanium white. He also uses enamel, oil, acrylic, various other kinds of mediums. And, uh, well, this is not a nice piece of linen, but you can also see that he's got, uh, I would call that an Indian red and yellow ochre underpainting. I was also very interested in the idea of uh, the brush stroke and uh, maybe we'll see some more of these where he, he actually had special brushes made. This is untitled 1962 oil on linen and I would say that that's probably about 66 inches square, maybe five and a half feet. Now, I'm not sure, but probably about 12 or 13 years ago, there was a, a Broadway play that uh, basically used a, a all-white painting as a plot device, and a lot of people said that it was totally based on Robert Ryman, so I guess that would be one sign of success is when you start having your work used as a subject for a Broadway play. Well, we'll come in and sweep the area. Uh, well, this is great because it's got examples of a lot of his different uh, bodies of work. Well, I'm going to make this easy on myself, so I'll just follow the, uh, the gallery list. This is titled Factor 1983. Oil and acrylic on recto and acrylic with varnish on verso of fiberglass and aluminum. Actually, uh, I think you'd have to be a pretty uh, astute student of painting to appreciate a lot of the stuff that he's doing because it's very, very subtle. And when you realize that uh, in a lot of ways, he's kind of thinking about the the position and function of paintings. And uh, so it's interesting. Okay, so this has got a, it's like an aluminum frame that he's got acrylic mounted on. And then it's probably floating about a foot in front of the wall. And uh, so the back is shiny. The front is more matte. You know, one of the other things that I always got a kick out of was uh, Robert kind of has a an obsession with the the fasteners. It's titled Accord. Oil on aluminum with steel bolts. And a lot of these pieces have been borrowed from museums. titled The Pair Navigation, and again, we've got a very a interesting approach to the presentation. So that's oil on fiberglass with aluminum wood and aluminum fasteners. 
and he's got struts on here. But again, he does this so you kind of have to think about light and reflection in a little different way than you would if it was hanging on a wall. And uh, he's even got a little highly polished edge on there. It's kind of entitled Arista. Oil on unstretched linen with staples and chalk lines. So, okay. If you would measure this out and then just tack your unstretched linen to the wall inside your snap lines. This is arrow, oil on plexiglass with plexiglass fasteners. You know, in many ways, I think he's uh, kind of conscientiously trying to really reduce everything down so that the only thing that you see is, is the paint and the quality of the light reflecting off the paint. This piece is not painted. Oh, maybe it's painted with aluminum paint. Oh, or maybe he's counting this little strip around the edge. Again, this piece is probably about uh, well, six foot square. And uh, he's got his little hex bolt fasteners. This is titled Catalyst 3, 1985. Now, I was up at the Dia Foundation oh, a couple of years ago, and they had a selection of his I believe they were works on paper, and uh, well, <laughs> if you see about 50 of these lined up in a row, you start to wonder, you know, should I take this seriously? But when you spend a little time and start you know, noticing the subtle variations and uh, the different qualities of the paint, the brush strokes, the pattern of the strokes, and they start to see that there is something pretty, pretty interesting happening there. This is post-1981 oil on aluminum and polythylene with aluminum bands, steel bolts, and steel screws. This is untitled 1973. Double baked vitreous enamel on oxidized copper. So again, we're dealing with, I wouldn't say it white paint, but a white pigment that's been applied to a surface. And I think this is nice because you're also getting the contrast with these uh, sections of the oxidized copper that really shows you how how white the white is. This 
is untitled. Vinyl polymer on aluminum. Nineteen sixty four. Yeah, that does make me think of Jonathan Lasker. Well, it's kind of interesting. I'm looking at this in the monitor and uh, this white painting on a white wall should probably disappear, but uh, it seems that there's a little yellowing maybe. No, I don't know if that was just the natural color of the pigment or whether there's been some aging going on there. It's untitled enamel on aluminum. And uh, oh, this is probably about a 36 inch square. Oh, and look, he's left a little, there's a little edge there. Okay, well, we'll, we'll zip down this last wall. These pieces are all untitled. There's another early piece, square. It's casein and graphite on paper. That's interesting. It's got a signature in there. Also untitled 1959. Oil and gesso on paper. And that's probably about 10 inches square. Untitled. Oil on canvas and okay, so we've got a little eggshell blue, robin's egg blue under there. It's also 1959 and again, he's kind of using one edge of the canvas is an area where it's less, less activated, less worked. So it wants to have some contrast. Untitled, 1960-61. Oil and gesso on unstretched linen. Well, I always like these kinds of works because this is when the artists are, you know, they're very unfussy. They have some ideas. Maybe they pick up something in the studio and they just start working it, and then somehow magic happens, and uh, and then they preserve it. Well, we'll wrap up looking at this wonderful piece. Untitled, 1960, oil and gesso on linen. And again, we've got uh, kind of a, a two edges that are less worked. And this is kind of odd. He's got a little rectangle of white paint there and a signature. And, uh, well, you know, there are a lot of people coming at the end of abstract expressionism that tried to find a new path, something something more they could do with paint. And, uh, well, I like the fact that he, you know, a lot of people would say he limited his options. He really painted himself into a corner, but in a lot of ways, that's where he's kind of built his entire career. He's built a, an empire on these very kind of simple and essential aspects of painting, the white paint, the brush stroke, the square, and how you attach it to the wall. This is James Calm reporting on Robert Ryman here at the Dia Foundation, West 22nd Street. And as always, thank you, Kate. Thank you.